Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to the uh, virtual general membership meeting. Um, my name is Romeo Arietta. I'm the CEO of the Marin Association of Realtors. We have a full agenda today and I look forward to getting to it. But first, there are a couple of housekeeping uh, notes that I'd like to share. Everyone's muted by default. Uh, I ask that if you have any questions, so please type them in the question and answer feature. And we'll do our best to get to them throughout the meeting. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank our three premier sponsors for their continued support of the Marin Realtors and this event. They are Homa Rizzoli uh, of Mutual Omaha Mortgage, uh, Christine Gooden, uh, Prandy Property Management, and Mary Jo LaFay of Mutual Omaha Mortgage. Uh, we'll be inviting them to speak for two minutes at various times throughout the program. And I ask that you please stay until the end for a giveaway, must be digitally present to win. And I am going to turn it over to our president-elect, Logan Link. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, so yes, I'm Logan Link, president-elect. Um, our president, Kathy Youngling, unfortunately had something come up last minute, so can't be here today. But I know that she sends her warmth and that she put a ton of love into this agenda. So I think we'll have a really good meeting. Um, so first of all, I mean, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming and spending an hour of your morning with us today. I know like, I feel like the market's really heating up. All of our clients are back from summer break. And so everything's crazy again. And I think the fact that we're all just taking this time to kind of get together in one room, even if it's a virtual room and just connect and learn a little bit, um, I think that's really great. So thank you for that. Uh, so we are going to try to keep everything to about an hour today so that we can all like get back into the field. Um, but without further ado, I, I mean, I say we just launch right into it. So first we'll have a quick little note from one of our sponsors, Huma Rizzoli, and then we will go right into the main part of our program, which is hearing from Rich Shortall uh, regarding wildfire safety, which I think is something that we can all agree is top of mind these days. So Huma, do you want to take it away? Sure. Whenever you're ready, Huma. Okay. Uh, okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Homa Rasuli. I'm a reverse mortgage specialist with Mutual of Omaha Reverse Mortgages. And first, I wanted to thank you all for your support and uh, for always thinking of me and calling me with your requests and inquiries for your clients. And thank you, uh, Murray Realtor Association, to have me presenting today. I'm very excited to be here and uh, wish we could see each other uh, in person. And um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, reverse mortgages and reverse mortgages are for homeowners over 62 years old and they're all in short program, FHA and Jumbo program. But we know all that uh, we have great webinars for reverse mortgages for purchase use every month. So if anyone is interested to um, listen uh, about that and get into that webinar, please let me know. I can send you the invitation for that. But overall, I just wanted to give you some hints about reverse mortgages. Reverse mortgages are uh, great for refinancing. So we have a lot of people who are having problems making their uh, monthly mortgage payment. We can replace their mortgage with a reverse mortgage. We can great, uh, create a great line of credit for um, your clients as a reverse mortgage. We can use the reverse mortgage for purchase. And if someone wants to purchase with cash because of all the great stuff that is going on in the market, they can use uh, cash to purchase the house. And as soon as they move in, we can do a reverse mortgage and get them a line of credit and replace their mortgage. Um, we can great, uh, create an annuities with the reverse mortgages so they can re uh, receive monthly payments. It's uh, very important for all of us to know about the options that we can help our clients, we can help our neighbors, we can help our parents or family members to be able to help them to have other options available. So please call me with any question that you may have. And I have great champagne. I don't know if you can see it, and great wine. So for people who can stay around, 
and get these two. Uh, we will raffle at the end. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. I personally deliver this to you so we can chat also. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you, Huma. I appreciate that. Um, so to give just a quick broad overview of what we're doing for the next little bit here. So first, as I said, we'll hear from Rich Shortel, who's going to inform us all on steps we can take to help with wildfires. And then we'll do a little bit of just housekeeping. I'm going to update you on some of the things that we've been working on on the association. Um, a couple things like that, introduce the 2022 Board of Directors. And then at the end, we have a fun segment from a comedian, Leslie Bayagani, um, and Kathy put this all together. And I am so excited to see what's in store. So definitely worth sticking around um, until the end for that. All right, so um, Rich, looking forward to hearing from you. So to give everybody a little bit of background, Rich Shortel is a retired San Francisco Fire Department Assistant Deputy Chief. And he's also served on the SF FD EMS Chief, Deputy Director of the San Francisco Office of Emergency Services, and General Manager of the Bay Area SUASI Homeland Security Program. And Rich is currently a member of the Board of Directors of the Ross Valley Fire Department and is an elected director of the Sleepy Hollow Fire Protection District. He joined Fire Safe Marin as director in 2015 and currently resides in San Anselmo with his wife, Diana. He now serves as executive coordinator of Fire Safe Burn. All right, Rich, uh, take it away. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you. I'm going to do the ever popular share screen here. Okay, I hope everybody can see that all right. So I thought I'd give a little bit of background on what Fire Safe Marin does and then how wildfire preparedness, particularly impacts uh, the real estate industry. So a little bit about Fire Safe Marin. We have uh, a lot of different programs over here. We've gotten really busy. And to tell you the truth, the reason that we are is because of the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. Everybody probably remembers that that was uh, the Measure C tax measure passed two years ago. And that really is providing the funding for Fire Safe Marin to do all these great programs that we're excited about. We have a really good website. We get way over 200,000 visitors a year and it's pretty much A to Z, anything you might wanna know about wildfire preparedness. We have a brand new TV show coming up. We used to do webinars, but now we've moved to a new format. Uh, it'll be live streaming. You can get it. Our first episode will be released September 16th. You can watch it on Marin TV or a YouTube channel or go to website for a link, but I think it's very fast paced, exciting and entertaining as well as informative. YouTube channel with a couple hundred videos all related to wildfire preparedness. We do workshops for different parts of Marin County. We support a program called Firewise USA, which is designed to help communities prepare for, wildfire, uh, for wildfires. Uh, I'll come back to more on that later. Uh, we're the sponsor of the Chipper Day programs. Everybody in Marin is getting two opportunities at curbside chipping this year. It's a big program. And people really like it. We do educational program with the schools, both uh, around the fifth grade level, and then also we're starting to work with high schools. We have a lot of uh, partner agencies that we work with. An example would be Marin Center for Independent Living. And as speaking with Romeo, I look forward to really viewing all of you as realtors as a partner to us, because I think we have a lot in common and can really help each other. We provide special training to landscape contractors and home hardening contractors. And then we support a program called Get Ready, which is a more uh, all hazard type of preparedness. Um, I think of real important to all of you, I think you're probably aware of this, but the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority created a program, which I think is really valuable of home evaluations. These are really detailed assessments of homes. And in this year, 25,000 homes have already been evaluated. And it's a comprehensive evaluation and people are left with a document which clearly explains all the good things that they're doing and some areas that they need improvement. It's very focused on education. It's not about issuing citations and whatnot, but I think this has an impact uh, for realtors because now there is a piece of paper that documents how well that house uh, meets local codes and how well it's prepared out there. So I think in terms of disclosures and whatnot, that's gonna be something to take into consideration in the future. Uh, 
As you know, there's been a change. Um, this, this summer, I believe, is when the law went into effect, which has um, some new disclosure information on forms, and they're all related to the subject of what we call hard home, hardening your home. Five years ago, all the focus was on defensible space, cut the vegetation, limb up the trees, that type of thing. But what we've learned from the wildfires in the North Bay over the last five years is most homes are actually burning down because of vulnerabilities of the homes themselves. Uh, I'm gonna get into some detail on that. So we're, that's why there's a new focus on improvements that need to make of the home that make a real big difference. So one of the first things that's on the list is so-called vents. And I'm sure everybody realizes this, that there um, are all kinds of vents in the home and the foundation, sometimes in the soffit area, which are necessary for ventilation to prevent mold and whatnot in the home. A lot of the vents which were installed 20 years ago plus, the screening is too large. It's usually quarter inch screening, or in many cases, the vents are missing. So the new standard is to have uh, screening that's either one eighth or one sixteenth of an inch. And that's something that comes up in uh, these home evaluations. In many cases, it's really simple to replace it. It's almost a do-it-yourself type of thing for most people. And then there's more advanced vents. If you look at the lower left-hand corner, you'll see flame going up against the event. Most wildfires burn down a home because embers go through an opening in the home. A window that's been left open, a door that's been left open, a vulnerability in the vents or somewhere on the roof, somewhere like that. Um, but the, there's a newer style vent that not only keeps the embers out, but if there's direct flame, like you're seeing in that photograph down there, it will also, there's a sort of a seal that comes down and seals it up and flame can't get in. These, this is, particular van is Vulcan, but there's other brands which I'm showing on the other side over here and they come in all different shapes and sizes and whatnot. But when you see it on the form, the issue of vents, this is what it's about and it's designed to keep embers and in many cases, direct flame out of the homes. And those vents are oftentimes in the lower right you see up in what we call the soffit area, those little round ones. A lot of those are either missing or somehow the screening is too big. So this is all part of the things that need to be sealed up. There's a next catch-all, the next three things are roof gutters and flashings. I think everybody can understand that a wood shingled roof is a hazard. The embers land on it. You really can't put a protective barrier on them and whatnot. So it really is time to replace the wood shingled roofs. This next one is gutters and gutters are just a huge vulnerability. If the gutters are not screened, and we all know this, I had this problem a long time for myself, you fill up with leaves pretty quickly. What happens is the embers land in those leaves and you'll see there's a little space between where the asbestos shingle comes down and where the gutter meets the roof in there. And that's a real area of vulnerability. The fire gets up in there and the next thing is inside the attic and then the house can burn down. So to help protect against that, we get into flashing. And you can see that if you put a piece of metal sort of L-shaped like that, between the edge of the roof going into the gutter, that helps protect that area of vulnerability in there. So when you look at the disclosure form, roofs, gutters, flashing, three different items on there, that's the type of thing that they're talking about. And it's really designed to protect the home against ember intrusion. And then of course, double pane tempered windows. Um, in my days in firefighting in San Francisco, most homes in the city were older and had single pane windows. I can tell you, you get even a relatively small fire inside a room and the glass breaks. Single pane windows are easily broken by heat, but a double pane tempered window is extremely resistant and you can have quite a bit of fire heat out there and it'll survive that. And that's why that's next on the list over there of important things. Then the last thing on the list that uh, is on the disclosure form is it has to do with the first five feet around the home. We call it zone zero. And when you look at this illustration here, there's three different areas. There's a little area of blue around each of the homes that represents the first five feet. That's zone zero. That is the most critical area to protect around the home. In that area, you don't want to have anything that's flammable. It doesn't need 
to be bare earth, but that's where you want to not put flammable mulch like gorilla hair. And I see that all the time. That's not a good idea to have in there. You don't want to have large bushy plants that are literally flammable in there. That's not good. Um, you want to be kind of sensible what you're doing in that there. The same thing with storing firewood there, which we see amazingly to me all the time. That's not the place for that. Um, propane tanks or even furniture that has combustible cushions and pillows and things like that. You want all of that five feet away from the house. That area in there should be relatively safe. You can have succulent plants, maybe gravel mulches and things like that. There's a lot of options in there, but that is really the most important area to protect because what happens is the embers come, they hit the home, they don't ignite the home and fire for the most part, they fall into that area up there and then they accumulate, creates quite a bit of heat, doesn't take much to catch whatever's on fire there. There's a couple other zones that matter. You go from five feet out to 30 feet. That's where you really want to keep the grass short, have kind of a fire smart yard. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then you're out to 100 feet where you're really getting a little bit further out there. But once again, that's a responsibility to maintain that, limb up the trees, keep the grass cut and so forth. The real goal here is to create what we call a fire smart yard. So the yard, there's many, many very attractive ways to do this. My own personal opinion is we need sort of a, a shift in aesthetics in Marin County. We've all grown up with really something that we've inherited from the 40s and 50s, maybe early 60s, about how homes should look here. But there is a more modern look that is much more fire smart. And in these cases, we have two basic principles. One is things need to be spread out a bit in the yard. You don't want to have, which I see this all the time, a 50 by 25 patch of solid juniper. That's just not healthy. That's extremely fire vulnerable. You can see how they've used concrete steps or larger mulches and whatnot to spread the plants out a little bit here. So that's horizontal spacing. You want to break up the path of the fire. And then the second one is vertical spacing, where you want to make sure that trees are limbed up and that there's not bushes and things which come right up to the tree. So you start, the embers come in, they fall through the tree, they land on the ground, then the next thing you know, the bushes are lit on fire, they're right up to the tree, and then you do have a problem with the tree. So fire smart landscaping is a big thing for us, but it is a shift in thinking, and it's something I think we really wanna to try to encourage everybody because it does look attractive when it's done well. Um, this is a program that I think when you're, at point of sale, this is something that you can talk to uh, new buyers about. One thing that's fantastic in Marin, we are taking wildfire preparedness very seriously. So we passed the tax measure to create the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. We have very, very good fire departments over here that just do a fantastic job of putting out fires before they get really large. But we have a program called Firewise USA, which is individual communities working together to become better prepared. We have the most Firewise sites in the United States of any county. So we have over 70 of them and we're still growing. And I think when somebody's buying a new home, one of the things they probably would like to know is by the way, you are in a community that is Firewise USA certified. Encourage people to get join in that. But I do know because I get them myself that a lot of times new buyers in Marin sometimes have questions about how far safe is the county. And I think this is a real encouragement of them that we're going in the right path and help them to get involved from day one. And then the last thing you might tell somebody, you get somebody, in a, and again, I, I kind of laugh about this because I literally do get calls about this. Somebody's coming from the East Coast. They read about the big forest fires up in these Sierras and whatnot. And, you know, what should I do? Well, you, there's no substitute for personal preparedness. And so that's another thing that you can tell people. We have a fantastic system here of alerting and warning. Sign up for Alert Marin. We have tons of resources available. Go to the Fire Safe Marin website, evacuation checklist, how to dress if you have to go, how to pack a go bag, what kind of batteries you need to back up, how to take care of pets, on and on and on and on. All that information is out there. Most of these steps are really pretty easy to do. And once again, I think it provides a reassurance 
to a new client, then in fact, this is accounting that's well prepared. And there's some things that you can do for yourself, which will give you a lot of confidence that you're going to do well in a wild farm. And then the last one, I'll say a little bit about insurance. There's a lot of questions about insurance, and this is kind of a complicated area, really. I, will, I, I won't go into it in great detail, but everybody realizes that um, insurance companies are in this to make money. That's certainly the way it needs to be. And with all the fire losses we've been having for a number of years here, that really makes it difficult for them to provide insurance everywhere in the state. There's a lot of regulations that come from the state's insurance commission, but still, there's still private enterprise and there's a lot that they can do on their own. So there's a group, but I'm going to get into a little bit more in a minute, called United Policyholders, which is doing a really good lobbying job of working with the insurance board and individual insurers to try to change how things are done. Because one of the things that insurance companies are not doing is giving credit for either individuals who've really taken a lot of steps to create defensible space and harden their home or communities that are, for example, firewise, where there've been a lot of improvements made there and so forth. And let alone a county like Marin that has the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority doing massive work and investments of millions of dollars every year to try to make improvements out here. And so we're trying to get them to acknowledge the benefit of doing that and take a little bit different look at things. There always will be necessary to do um, some kind of evaluation of an independent home because you know sometimes somebody in those areas is not taking care of it, but we would like to see more recognition that that's what's going on. It's a bit of an uphill battle, but that's kind of the one that's being waged out there. And just my last one is a little bit of a pitch for United Policyholders. This is just an example. You go to their website. You can find it on Firesafe Win website too. We have a lot of information about insurance. But what do you do if you do get dropped by your insurer? You know, you do want to act promptly. There's, you can get help from United policyholders and local fire departments. You really can shop around, compare prices and coverage. And then as a last resort, we have the fair plan. I actually have a property up in Tahoe that's on fair plan because that was the only thing I could get. It costs more, but at least I was able to get it. So there are options and United policyholder is a really good for helping people navigate through problems that come up out there. So the last thing is, uh, you know, Fire Safe Marine, we really try to be in, in partnerships. We work with um, almost every agency in Marin out here. We're trying to do our best to make things safer. And I'm going to give one last pitch. I hope all of you after September 16th will tune in. It's streaming, so you can watch anytime you want to this new wildfire. Um, we call it Wildfire Watch, our new TV show has a lot of interesting guests and a lot of segments on it so that people can um, find out about wildfire preparedness in what I think of as a very interesting way. So with that, um, I'm glad to take questions. I'll take a look at the q and I think that's how we're going to submit questions. So I'll pull up the first one this year. Where can we buy our fire safe vents? actually anywhere. So you can buy them at any hardware store, all the big ones, Home Depot and so forth have them. Um, I do personally like the Vulcan vents a lot because they provide the protection not only against um, embers, but also direct flame. If you're a real do-it-yourselfer, you can save a lot of money because you can find the same materials in there that the vents are made out of. So if you have an existing vent on your home, you can actually buy the honeycomb that keeps the flame from coming in. They sell it at Home Depot and you can buy the screening. And if you're a little bit handy, it's actually pretty easy to modify the existing vents um, to meet what I think are, are the better standards. Awesome. Do we have any more questions from anyone? I'm, I'm not seeing anything in the Q&A, but don't be shy. No? Can I ask a question? Of course. Yes. Um, Rich, thank you so much for all the information. Uh, I heard about this new door, uh, the garage door to the house policy or um, that you have to install the door to stop the fire from coming in from the garage. Is that right? So I'll put it this way. As I was describing earlier, that homes burn down 
in wildfire, mostly because of embers. And anywhere that an ember can get into the home needs to be sealed. The average garage door, in my experience, that you see out there, you know, typical roll up one with a rubber gasket at the bottom of it, that's going to seal and you're not going to get ember intrusion. But one of the problems that comes up, and this happened in Fountain Grove. So Fountain Grove had all these relatively modern homes, right, built to the newer mm -hmm. standards. It had uh, tile roofs, and most of the homes were stucco, and tons of them burned down. And the reason for that, and everybody should think about this, is so the power was out when the fire came out there, and they needed to evacuate. So what do people do? Understandably, they open the garage door. Hopefully, we all know how to do that if the power is out. They open the garage door, get the family in the car, and they drive off. But what did they not do? Close the door. So here's this huge void. All the embers go in there. And that's not the only reason houses burned down out there, but that happened a lot. So like anywhere else, you need if when you're evacuating, you need to close all the doors. Don't lock them because the firefighters actually need to come in. Close all the windows. Make sure the garage door is closed and make sure that ahead of time, you've taken some of the steps we talk about in the five foot area and cut grass and hopefully you have a fire smart uh, garden and whatnot. And really your chances of surviving, your home surviving the wildfire go up immeasurably. Thank you. Awesome. Well, if there's no more questions, um, then I would say thank you so much, Rich. This is, I. I honestly think that as agents, we have such a platform to kind of help promote these ideas and spread the word. And I think it's really powerful for all of us to be informed. Um, and Rich, when, when you were talking, you mentioned that sometimes like newer buyers who are worried about this kind of thing, it's helpful to talk about fire safety. I can say I've experienced that firsthand, like being able to say to clients, like, look, these are the things our communities are doing. And I, as an agent and my colleagues were informed about these things. It just shows that we care in Marin, um, which I think is really reassuring. So. Um, oh, I think I see one more question that just popped up in the Q&A, let's see. Um, oh, just Matt Prandy, thank you, saying that this is very informative, which I agree with that. So, um, awesome. Well, thank you again, Rich. And um, now we will move into a quick presentation from another one of our sponsors, Christine Gooden with Prandy Property Management. Good morning, everyone. Nice to be with you this morning. Uh, let me set up my screen share here. Just like uh, defensible space, we think that pre uh, professional property management services can also create a sense of peace of mind, um, which is really important, especially in these days when there's all kinds of new laws and new regulations that are entering the world of uh, property management. So here's a few thoughts that we had that certainly offer peace of mind and profession, uh, protection uh, through property, through having professional property management services. A couple of thoughts here. Um, as you know, Prandy Property Management does not buy or sell real estate. So definitely um, consider letting Prandy uh, bring your clients a peace of mind that can help them in their investment properties. Uh, some interesting tidbits that Matt had suggested that I share with you about the current market. In the first eight months of this year, we rented 80 single family homes, and that is the average rent. The average rent in those homes was went up to 5,300, approximately 5,300 a month. The lowest rent we had out of those homes was 2,700, and the highest was 15,500. Average square footage, 1864, which brings the price per square foot about $2.86. That is quite high. Um, compared to 2020, the average single family rental was $44.76 a month. So that's a fair amount of a jump, almost $1,000 in one year. And the price per square foot was about $2.63 per square foot. So those were some interesting tidbits to us. So I'm, sh I'm sure they're interesting to you folks as well. Um, stick around to the end of today's meeting. We have a beautiful uh, framed, original framed canvas photo from our very own Matt Prandy Boris. This is a stunning photograph of a, our local iconic bridge here. 
Um, so, and I also want to bring the best wishes from Melissa. She's currently traveling and asked Matt and I to step in um, to wish everybody well on her behalf this morning. So she'll be back later this month. She's currently on a rotary project in Africa. So she'll be back in a couple of weeks. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. And a special thanks to Rich for his information this morning. My father is a retired San Francisco firefighter. And that we, we, he preached that information to us for years. So thanks for sharing that with all of us this morning, Rich. All right, thank you, Christine. Those statistics are really interesting. That's kind of a helpful, I found myself jotting that down because I feel like my clients are always asking me like, how much could I rent my house out for? So that's kind of, thank you. All right, so now um, we're moving into the election of officers and directors for 2022. Um, so I would like to officially announce the results of the annual election of the meeting of Marin Realtors. So typically in the past, our elections have been in person, but what we did this year is we moved to an electronic written ballot, which turned out very, very well. Um, we had approximately 305 members vote, which is 23% of our membership, which is a lot for getting individual realtors to um, go ahead and vote. So we were really happy about that. So first um, I'll take a minute to recognize our 2021 board of directors. So our directors are Chris Backer, Charlotte Bozell, Kathleen Clifford, Michelle Dodd, Bob Donlin, Elizabeth Green Kilgore, Drew Howes, Mike Jackson, Matt McPhee, Mike Milano, Carolyn Moran, Phoebe Reyes, Beth Sasson, Margie Smith, Kathy Youngling, and myself. And I can say it's been a great board this year. Um, a lot of really good collaboration, getting things done over Zoom, super productive um, group. So this has been awesome. And thank you everyone so much for your service. Okay, so in accordance with the bylaws, only Marin Realtors were eligible to vote. Um, individuals who were on the slate for election were all nominated for office by the nominating committee, but Realtors who were not nominated had the option of adding their name onto the ballot uh, by having a petition signed with at least 5% of our members. So we did not receive any petitions. Uh, so first of all, let me thank the nominating committee that put together such a good slate this year. So that was comprised of Chris Backer, who chaired the committee, Blaine Morris, Yoko Kasai, Gary Newman, Kathy Youngling, and myself. Um, so thank you, Chris, for again, doing such an awesome job uh, putting the committee together. All right. Okay, so the officers for 2022 are on the screen here. Uh, we have Sylvia Barry acting as president elect. Beth Sasson will continue on as treasurer. Lori Shank will act as secretary. And I, um, Logan Link, will be serving as your president. And the new 2022 directors, we have four of them Joe Burns, Lucas Meyer, Elizabeth Pedrick, and April Lepetto Smith. So thank you for joining us. Um, we're excited to have these four new members who will all bring such good value to our board. All right. And we do have directors from this year whose terms are continuing on next year. So those members are Michelle Dodd, Elizabeth Green Kilgore, Drew House, Matt McPhee, and Mike Milano. So all of the names just listed will round out our 2022 board of directors. And um, I think we'll have a really great year. All right. That concludes the election of our officers and directors. So congratulations, everybody. Okay, uh, I think it's time to hear from, yes, a good round of applause. We'll do a little virtual <laughs> applause here. All right, so let's hear from another one of our sponsors. This is our final sponsor of the day, Mary Jo Lafayette with Mutual Omaha Mortgage. Mary Jo, what do you have for us? And don't forget to unmute yourself, Mary Jo. Mary Jo, I think you're still muted. Got it? See, Romeo, do you have? Oh, good. Perfect. We can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> and hopefully you can see my screen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, to the MAR uh, team to putting for putting together that presentation. I was just calling my HOA about how to get approval to put a metal roof on my house. So I think we're all feeling uh, vulnerable and that's super helpful information. Um, and I also want to thank everyone who attended my um, August seminar uh, webinar online about how to uh, help your clients if they're selling a highly appreciated residence 
to be able to sell that residence and defer the capital gain tax. Most people think you can only do that on an investment property, but there are actually ways to combine the 121 uh, as a primary residence and defer capital gains through the 1031. I'll be doing a seminar next month with Shanae Mabry, uh, either in October or no November about 1031s and reverse mortgages and how to combine them. And uh, next Tuesday, I'll be doing a business, bu business builder class, uh, be a super agent. So if anybody wants to attend, it's a one hour class and it's complimentary uh, just to help you uh, understand uh, the, the preliminary information on how to help your clients. Um, and uh, for those who um, are interested in demographics, we finally have a demographic, you probably, most of you probably know, that has surpassed the baby boomers in size, the millennials. But it's important to remember that even though we have more millennials than boomers now, the boomers still hold the wealth. And most of that wealth is held in the form of home equity, especially in Marin County. So we have, an, we have a really good opportunity here to help boomers and seniors exit a highly appreciated primary residence and get into a better position financially. And the key for build, biz, building your business as a realtor is understanding how to motivate those older homeowners uh, and help them see the advantage of downsizing, right sizing, and how to buy their next home without taking on a mortgage payment. And that's where I come in as a reverse mortgage home equity specialist. Uh, so we've got mature Americans holding over $8 trillion worth of home equity. So turning that into retirement income and buying their next home um, and how to do that without getting a big tax bill is key. Two main objections when I talk to homeowners and encouraging them to uh, be able to get to more of their home equity than they would by just doing a reverse mortgage uh, to downsize or right size. Their main objections are I don't want to pay a big capital gain tax bill, which can often run, you know, 300 to a million dollars, 300,000 to a million. And then, of course, where will I go? Uh, things are so expensive. Um, so those are things that I can help you understand how um, retirees see this picture of home equity and downsizing and how to overcome some of their major objections so that they're more interested in working with you. Having the right tool, tools and team, of course, is key. And uh, I've assembled a team of 1031, DST specialists, CPAs, and so forth to help explain this uh, advantage to your clients. And uh, here's a little bit of information about the 121. And if you're interested, I'm not doing any giveaways today, but I am offering a coffee or lunch on me. If you'd like to meet and do some brainstorming on how you can incorporate these, uh, these tactics and strategies into your business for this year and going forward. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you Tuesday at 11. Awesome. Thank you, Mary Jo. And Mary Jo, how do we pronounce your last name? I think I may have mispronounced it. Is it Lafay? It is Lafay, yes. Okay, good, perfect. I just you're on such a first name basis with our whole industry, I think. So, you know, I skipped that part. But Mary Jo Lafay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Awesome. So um, so now I will jump into some of the things that we've been working on as a group, um, as an association. So first of all, you might remember President Kathy Youngling issued a fair housing challenge earlier this year. Um, so this is kind of a competition that is going on or not so much a competition, but like a sweepstakes almost in a way. Um, so at the end of the year, we will announce the winner of our fair housing challenge, uh, which will be at our holiday year end meeting. So we've had really good participation so far and whoever is the winner will be eligible to win $600. So there's still time to get in and you know, become eligible. So basically all you would need to do is complete the NAR at Home with Diversity training. And we're partnering with the North Bay Association of Realtors to bring this training um, to us in a way where those who participate will actually um, have a certificate of having completed the training. So that's happening on October 26th and 27th from noon to four each day. Um, so you can message us if you'd like to you know, sign up for that course. And then the second step is to do the Fairhaven simulation from NAR. So this is kind of like a video game style um, format almost that reiterates some of the points that we learn about in the diversity training. And then the last step is to watch the NAR overcoming bias video. So super easy to become eligible um, and a lot of good information. So I'd encourage everybody to do that if you haven't already. And then secondly, um, 
Many of you probably remember from years past the Good Neighbor Award. So this is where we acknowledge and recognize one agent from our association who's gone above and beyond with volunteering, giving back to the community. Um, this year, we're awarding $500 to the realtor who wins. Last year's winner was Kim Straub for her amazing work. And she actually ended up bringing in $20,000 for her nonprofit um, via the Marin Realtors Association and CAR and NAR as well. So the Good Neighbor Award can be a really good avenue um, towards fundraising for the organization that you're supporting. So I would say nominate yourself now. If you're doing good work, don't be shy. Tell us about it. Um, or if you know somebody, another agent or member who is doing a lot of good work, please let us know. So we're gathering nominations for that Good Neighbor Award um, currently. And then also, we are hoping to bring in more affiliate members because we feel like this industry, there's us as agents, but there's also the teams that we really rely on, the painters, the housekeepers, the lenders, so many people who are contributing to what we're doing every day. And we want to make sure that they feel like a part of the realtor community as well. Um, so what we have done is we have waived the application fee for affiliate members through the end of the year. So we're hoping that everyone can help us spread the word. Just tell, tell the people who you love working with that we would like to have them as part of our community. Um, and that fee has been waived so they can reach out and kind of see what that's all about. All right, and then um, website updates. So we are about to do a pretty big overhaul of our website and th there will be more information to come about that soon. But essentially what we're trying to do is create one great platform that all of us can access uh, for the information that we just need all the, all the time, every day um, as agents. So that's something that's coming next year. So kind of keep an eye on the website space a little bit. Okay, and then training for the new purchase agreement form. So as you may or may not have heard, there's some changes coming to the RPA. Uh, so this will be in December, this new RPA. Uh, so we want to give everybody an opportunity to kind of learn the ins and outs ahead of time and right off the bat. So there will be a RPA form course with a car attorney on November 2nd. That is a Thursday and it's a web training. Um, but kind of the cool thing is you earn four CE hours by completing the course. So um, that's November 2nd and we're offering a discounted rate of $65 to our members. Um, so that's a savings of 10% versus signing up directly through CAR. So again, just reach out to us. We'll help get that coordinated for you. Um, and then lastly, today is the final day of the recall election. So if you haven't voted yet, um, always a good thing to do. Just a reminder to get that done. All right. So that concludes my announcements. And then now we go into the fun portion. So Kathy has put together... Um, this last little segment, which is a su surprise to me too. So I'm excited to sit back and, and watch with everyone. Um, so we have Leslie Biagini. Leslie, if I am mispronouncing your last name there, please pipe in and correct me. But um, Leslie Biagini and her husband, Alex, own AJ Paint Masters. And what you may know if you keep up with the local comedy scene is that Leslie is a comedian performing locally. And we were just thinking about, and Kathy was thinking about what we could do to kind of make this a little bit fun and what do we all need right now? And honestly, we all need some comedy. So roped in Leslie and she is here to do something amazing. Um, so Leslie, I'm gonna let you take over. All right, thank you so much, Logan. That was very kind of you. Um, I'm excited to be here. I do have a couple of housekeeping announcements. Um, number one, there is a Tesla in the parking lot uh, with its lights on. Um, it's got a license plate that says, I sell RE. So if that's you, you'll want to get out there and, and get your uh, headlights turned off. Um, if you're not sure about your license plate, it's parked between a black Mercedes and a midnight blue BMW. So I'll, I'll give you guys a minute to get that resolved. Um, today is a great fun opportunity. Um, I loved all the fire safe information. I have to admit that I did miss some of it. I was organizing my fireworks in my storage unit. And so um, I only picked up on part of that five foot radius work, but I'm sure if I watch the video again, I will pick up on that. Um, we have a couple of great trivia questions for you that will be coming up in poll version that you guys can participate in and answer. And um, so we're going to, I'm going to read it out to you and then the poll will show up on your screen and you can just pick one of the answers. Um, so the first question is, which area of Marin is the highest? Is it Novato because it's most north 
or in headlands, Bolinas, you know why, or Mount Tam. So let that go out and you can answer. All right. In uh, our next question is, in what city would you live in if you owned both a BMW and a Tesla? Is it A, Novato, B, Kentfield, C, Mill Valley, or D, Tiburon? Next, this is a good one. This is how we know you've been in Moran and done your research. What Marin Street was made famous by the film American Graffiti? Is it A, East Blythdale, B, Panoramic Highway, C, 4th Street, and D, 3rd Street? All right, uh, Leslie, this is Romeo. I'm operating the, uh, I'm operating the poll. Apologies to everyone. I was a little slow on getting the poll out, but uh, we got the American Graffiti one running. It just takes me a second to uh, switch from question to question. All right, no problem. This next question, I think all of you are going to get correct. In what movie did a now deceased famous Mill Valley actor receive an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor? Is it Schindler's List, Nomadland, Goodwill Hunting, or Star Wars? All right, that poll has just launched. And our final preliminary question, you guys got that right. Uh, in what, what city has the only brick and mortar cannabis dispensary? Ironically, two times on the poll list, Bolinas comes up and you know why. Or is it Fairfax, Kentfield, or Point Reyes? Who do you guys think got all of them right? Fairfax. That's right. I know all about you realtor people. All right. So in our final question, we have an executive panel that was hand selected by your existing leadership. And um, some of them are conveniently part of your um, incoming leadership team. Our first participant is Chris Backer. He is your past president and the 2022 regional chair. He also has been a car director for a very long time. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, we've decided that we're gonna introduce these folks um, with the Jimmy Fallon style by doing senior superlatives. So Chris was voted most likely to get carded in a wine shop. Chris, welcome aboard. Thank you for having um, me. All That's right. Definitely true. Still holds true. <laughs> and we have Logan Link. She is your incoming president. She is been vote, has been voted most likely to eat a Beyond Burger during a photo shoot. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Up next, we have Sylvia Berry. She is your incoming president elect. And this is very timely given the presentation you guys had today. She was voted most likely to ignore an evacuation order because she hasn't finished typing her Facebook post yet. Up next, we have Joe Burns. Uh, Joe was a last minute stand-in for this and he is also most likely to be Ben Stiller's stand-in in Zoolander with his blue steel gaze. And finally, we have Beth Sassan. Uh, she is, has been voted most likely to be photographed with her dog. All right, so 
you five finalists, first of all, you're going to be receiving gifts personally designed by Kathy Youngling, so you know that they could be good. It could be a bag of lint from her dryer, a sock with a hole in it, or perhaps a baby's arm holding an apple. So here is your final question, and I'm gonna to have to pull this up. Here we go. Name the most, oh, sorry, For first of all, panelists, you must be the first person, in order to win, you must be the first person to enter the answer correctly into the chat. So this will not be a poll. This is how fast you can type the answer into your chat. Now, to come up with these results, we surveyed 100 people, completely ignored their responses, and I have created this myself. Number one, name the qualities most clients expect in a realtor. Is it A, knowledge of the area? B, they're never too busy for my referrals? C, a business card photo that is two decades old? Or D, all of the above? Now think wisely and then make your choices. All right, has everyone responded? <laughs> All right, Joe came in with B. That is a correct answer, um, as was D, which was all of the above. Um, so I'm gonna have to say the first person that answered correctly was Homa, who was not actually a participant in this question, because, and I'm surprised, Homa, because I've seen your posts on Nevada in the know, and I know that you're only halfway through um, your, the novel that you're writing on there. Um, but Sylvia, I am going to say congratulations to you because you are the winner. You will get the grand prize, which I believe Kathy is going to be mailing out to you, which is very exciting. But don't worry, the rest of the, the other four panelists will be getting a consolation gift. I'm not allowed to tell you what it is, but it is incredibly special. And I think that you will be very surprised when you receive it. All right. Thank you guys so much for letting me do this fun little Diddy game with you. And um, I wanted to, I think I have one more thing that I'm supposed to wrap up for you guys. So I want to get in there. Um, I do want to share that I am in fact an affiliate member. And so um, it was really great to be participating in this as of that. Um, so a couple of things that I get to have you guys know is um, actually Logan, I think you're going to get to do this. So Logan, I'm sending it back to you. Okay. To close out the program. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you, Leslie. That was super fun. I have to admit there was a little trivia in there that I didn't know the answers to. So, <laughs> um, so that was, that was awesome. Thank you for that. Okay. Well, I mean, I can't think of a better way to close things out than on that note. So basically we are done and yeah. I hope that everybody, um, I hope everybody feels like a little bit more connected after all of us coming together today. And then also a little bit more informed about um, wildfire safety, especially. I know I do. So, um, all right. Good hey, to see everybody. Romeo? Logan, this is Romeo. I just want to check. I think we have um, some uh, winners. I want to double check with um, Craig in the booth. Uh, do we have any of those uh, yes, ready to go? Yes, we do. Uh, Leslie, I sent them to you in the chat. I can send them to anybody who wants to announce them for the affiliate winners. I will absolutely make the announcement. So our first winner, number one, is Marsha Mills. Marsha, congratulations. Um, I believe you're, are you getting, is she getting one of Homa's? Homa's? Okay, yes. so Marsha, yes. you, you get that personally delivered to you by Homa. Um, she's an incredible driver, and I'm sure the bottle will be full when she gets there. Um, our second winner is Tony Belly. Tony, I guess we'll be getting the second bottle um, from yes. Homa. And, um, you know, it's an interesting little tidbit. Uh, Homa actually started out with four bottles to give away, but as of today, um, there's only two. I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, and then our, <laughs> third, our third winner is coming from Prandy Property Management, I believe. Christine, is that? Yes, okay. And that is Brian Witchell. Congratulations, Brian. Awesome. Oh, and Mary Jo LeFay has one. So maybe we can pull one more. Are you able to do that, Craig? Or pull one more winner for Mary Jo's 
coffee on her at, or yeah. lunch? Actually, that, that's an open invitation to everyone. So there, there's no- So you've all the, won it. Yes. Everybody's won that. Everybody's so you're won. all winners. Everybody's a winner. You are all number one in Mary Jo's book. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> her contact information is in the chat. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Mary Jo, for making us all winners. <laughs> you like that. Okay. Well, I think now that concludes everything. Um, and I'm glad we didn't forget about the bottles of wine because that's very important. So, yes. okay. Well, um, thank you again all for attending. I think that was really great. And um, go out and have an awesome day. And we will do something like this again soon. So, thank you, Logan. You did great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.